Hi, welcome back to Educator.com. This is a lesson on alcohol, its effects and dangers. So the alcohol that people drink when they're enjoying alcoholic beverages is actually called ethanol or ethyl alcohol. Um, so ethanol is what's in beer, wine, hard alcohol, etc. And it's made from alcohol fermentation with yeast. Uh, if you look at how breweries make their beer, how um, wineries um, make their wine, it's it's yeast. Um, and there are lots of different types of yeast. Um, sometimes they're they're actively adding, actually usually they're actively adding uh, yeast uh, to make it happen. Um, but there are even like beers out there that just use um, just natural fungi that happen to just be there um, with whatever plant product they're trying to ferment. Uh, but typically, yeah, it's it's adding active yeast, and the yeast do alcohol fermentation rather than lactic acid fermentation like we do. And really, um, alcohol is kind of like the waste product of yeast as they're um, metabolizing sugars. And so a multitude of plant parts can be used to make it um, ethanol, as long as sugar is present. So wine is not just made out of grapes. You can make wine out of plums. Uh, you can make wine out of apples. Uh, you could do it. Um, so as long as uh, the plant part has a significant amount of sugar to supply the yeast with glucose so it can then spit out the alcohol. Um, the reason why grapes are so common with making wine is grapes have a, a really high amount of sugar in them compared to some other fruits. Uh, human liver. The human liver is really what is affected um, the most by alcohol. It can break down ethyl alcohol or ethanol at a particular pace. Um, everyone's pace is ever so slightly different. Um, so you can look up averages in terms of like how much alcohol can a liver break down per hour. Um, but different people will have slightly different paces. Um, so if you're wondering why did so-and-so um, get a DUI when they only drank such and such amount of beer. Um, it's hard to predict how fast your liver breaks it down. But I'm digressing. This is ethanol. This is a representation of the molecule of ethanol. So it has two carbons. It's got the OH off to the side here. That's part of the reason it's called an, an alcohol. Um, this is what's broken down in the liver. Um, this is actually, uh, it's toxic. It is a poison. And that sounds odd to say, but that's why we have the term alcohol poisoning. It's just a matter of how much of this is in your bloodstream. Uh, similar with arsenic or cyanide, those are poisons, uh, but you can find traces of arsenic, just tiny, tiny amounts in the human body. What makes arsenic poisonous is if you're exposed to enough of it. Same thing with alcohol. Alcohol, um, little bits at a time, not that big of a deal, but um, lots of overexposure um, can definitely kill a person. Other alcohols are out there. This, ethanol is just one kind of alcohol. Uh, propanol. Uh, you may have heard of isopropyl alcohol. Rubbing alcohol. It will be this. Uh, it's not recommended you drink that. Um, it's something that we use to, you know, help with uh, getting rid of bacteria. You know, cleaning a wound site. Um, methanol uh, is actually it is poisonous. Uh, if you were to drink methanol, um, it could actually result in liver failure. So how is ethanol metabolized? How is it broken down in the liver? Well, alcohol dehydrogenase is the main player. So this is the enzyme that starts to break apart ethanol. So initially, alcohol dehydrogenase in the liver converts ethanol into acetaldehyde. And you're going to hear more about acetaldehyde later on in this lesson related to hangovers. Acetaldehyde is converted to acetate by other enzymes. And eventually it's broken down into CO2 and water. Um, so acetaldehyde is not that final product. There are other enzymes that break it down even further. So this acetate long term becomes CO2 and water. And of course you exhale CO2 and water can hang around. Eventually you're going to urinate it out though. Other factors affecting the pace. So it's not just how much alcohol dehydrogenase you have. There are other things that can affect it. Um, sex and sex hormones. Studies have shown time and time again that if you took a thousand random men and a thousand random women and had them all drink the same amount of alcohol over the same amount of time, and then you took their BAC, their, their blood alcohol concentration, you're going to hear more about this in a bit, on average, 
um, for that amount of alcohol over that period of time, men would have a slightly lower BAC than women. And we're talking a separation of, of 0.01 uh, BAC. Um, so for that amount of alcohol, maybe uh, the average man has 0.06, but the average female has 0.07. Um, so that most likely is related to slightly different amounts of alcohol dehydrogenase in the liver. Um, it's not true for every man and every woman. It's a, a statistical kind of average. Um, so the specific amount of sex hormones in your, in your body probably have something to do with it. Body mass. Uh, if me and someone who has twice the mass as me, weighs twice as much as me, sat down and drank the same amount of alcohol over the same amount of time, um, I'm going to have a higher BAC. My liver is smaller. I have probably less blood in my body than that person. Uh, so that, of course, has an impact too. Someone who is significantly larger is going to probably have a lower blood alcohol concentration. And medications can get in the way of the liver effectively breaking it down at the pace that it normally does.